Me personally, I, um, you know I already love missions, but for Dominican Republic, I have been there several times, um, just visiting for vacation, for honeymoon, for um, anniversaries, staying in resorts. Um, the last time I went to a resort, we went off off the beaten path to, um, went to a little retreat and it's all their schooling. I um, got to meet some of the locals, learn how to make, you know, like they made, how they pluck the cocoa beans to make coffee, how to make chocolate. Then you go off and there are little, they're little houses and they're all, the little ladies are hanging up their clothes and um, just the people, the little kids following you because they're hoping that they'll maybe give them a candy bar or something because they're hungry. And then a little, you know, one, one room schoolhouses and stuff and that's how they live there. And so that was really, when you get into the heart of it and see the real the people, the real people there, um, that's when I was like, wow, I really like the people here. Again, they're so kind. Um, and just, I really wanted to go do something besides just for the resort. So that's why I was like, oh, Dominican Republic would be a great place. It's not as scary as Africa right now, um, but it's, it's not here. It's a little bit traveling. So that's why I picked it. But, and then I asked all of you to join. My mission history is zero other than supporting Jessica. I always felt like I was supporting missions by helping watch the boys while she was gone and feeding John and yeah. keeping him, you know, kind of on the level and keeping an eye on. But backing up in history, when I was young, after I graduated from high school, I had a strong, strong pull to go on missions. Um, and I lived in a much more conservative time. My parents were, you, you obeyed your parents, there was no doubting, and I brought it up, and it was, you are absolutely not leaving the country. This is not, we will not discuss it, period, end of story. And I was the good child, and kind of, <laughs> kind of went along with that, and never did. But there was always that stir. So when Jessica started going on missions, she met with a little bit of, uh, some, some people were not completely in support in the family. Her father was one, and I just talked to her and I said, if God is calling you, this is where you go. I regretted not having gone at that time, and I said, I'm going to be frightened as I'll, I'll get out to, to see you go to Africa. But I will do anything I can to support that and I'll keep things going back here at home because I know what it feels like to have that pull. And over time, just as I asked several times, um, Mom, would you like to go on a mission trip? And I'd always say, uh, I think my mission right now is to stay here and love on your boys and, and keep things on at home fine so you can go and not feel that you have any any obligations or anything back here. Everything will be taken out. I'll, I'll take over and do that. So she said, this time, do you want to go? And I said, I don't know. I hadn't considered it. And I really, it, it feels like a real easy transition into going because I didn't, I don't know. I, it just feels right. So I think the time is now. And the other thing is, and I will say this to you ladies, you gotta watch it, those years go by fast. And I realize that in a few years, I might not physically be able to. I mean, that's I'm fine now, but that's a possibility. You, you can't stop the years, so if you're going to do it, come on, Diane, get busy and go. My first experience with missions was actually the Burkina trip with four of you that never got to Burkina. <laughs> um, that, that first trip, I was so convicted from the very first time I saw like a, like a little video about Burkina and I didn't know any of you. I was very new to Shawnee Alliance at that point and I'm sitting there and I'm like, no, I am not going to Burkina. Why, no, Lord, mm -hmm. nope. And then I'd see another ever like video of it and I'm like, Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. I'm not going to Africa. <laughs> and, and finally, um, after church one day, Pastor Messer was talking to, and I didn't mention anybody, and he was talking to my family, and he brought up, I don't know, just introducing himself, and I mean, we were pretty new, and, and talking, um, and he started talking about the mission. I said, yeah, actually, I haven't even told, told you this, Bill, my husband, and I said, I feel like I'm supposed to go on this Burkina trip. And so I, we started the process and the fundraising, and when it didn't happen, I was devastated. 
I remember being in Brussels. You were my roommate. And I remember getting into the hotel after a crazy little bus trip and bawling. And I remember just going, Lord, what are you doing? Like, what is this? This is not how it's supposed to be. Um, this is just not how it's supposed to be. I didn't want to believe it, that the trip was done, um, that we were going to go home. And I really, did, but I really felt convicted I was supposed to serve. And I came back and for a long time, I'm not gonna lie, I was salty. I was, I was very hurt that it didn't happen, that I felt such conviction and such planning went into it and fundraising and, and it didn't happen. And the first time I was asked about Dominican, John actually asked me and he's like, Are you, you should go. And I was like, no. <laughs> I was like, I, I think I'm, I, I want to wait for Guinea. And I think I'd rather do that mission trip. And then again, later, John came up after church. He said, you're going to the DR, right? And I'm like, the DR, he's like Dominican. And I'm like, then you walked up and said, gave me more information. I went, you know what? This is, this is it. This is, and this trip, it's not so well planned out. We have plane tickets and that is what is planned and so what it really showed me and and the testimony of it all it's not our plan it is yeah. god's plan in the end it is what he has planned for us and as servants and if we are just supposed to go there and serve in a way that we don't know yet then that is the service we're supposed to do and and was i i i so wanted to serve the ladies in burkina and but this trip i know is a god appointed trip i know this this team came together as a God appointed team, I think you told me you were going to cancel it because you didn't have a team. Have and so it's kind of amazing how God goes, yeah, we'll bring it together. It'll work out. I participated in a lot of different missions. I went to Burkina in 2015 with Jess and um, we had four then. Mm -hmm. And then um, the girls went to Chicago on a missions, my daughters, mm -hmm. and then um, we went to Painesville, Kentucky to the mm -hmm. Appalachian um, Outdoor Festival that we served at. And then um, I signed up to go to Burkina again, mm -hmm. how I met you, yeah. Yeah. and that didn't work out. And then um, in 2019, I had some health issues that kind of just put me on the back burner in life. So I kind of just backed up and retreated. And so um, after that, I had kind of just um, been pretty fearful of serving like I used to go to the soup kitchen in Lima and serve with the people there and I really like that's not healthy for me and then we had the COVID pandemic and I was like I didn't even go to church I mean I was like I just withdrew and so um, with those concerns I kind of just had decided that you know I'm my health issues are gonna last a lifetime and I'm probably not healthy enough to do like long term or overseas or anything like that and um and I was afraid I was afraid to go anywhere or do anything and um so just had talked an email to me like what do you think do you think you'd be interested and I literally was like no I'm not healthy enough to go no. thank you for asking me and um I was really sad about it because I thought God did spare my life I know he's not done with me yet but what what's the best way for me to serve and be healthy and then um I thought about it and I'm like I'm afraid I'm not healthy enough. I am healthy enough. I'm like, there. I mean, I'm living my everyday life and I'm like, I think that I'm willing to step out and, and do something again. And so then she texted me. I mean, I was convicted and like this, the feeling was so strong and it stirred inside of me for a really long time. And Burkina definitely changed my life. Mm -hmm. And so um, I look forward to what this trip has in store for me. And I'm just completely in surrender. I just said, whatever you will be for me. I'm, right. I'm, you saved me for a reason, so use me as your will. I remember, I think it was back in September, I seen an email from you mm -hmm. titled um, uh, Dominican Republic Mission Trip, and I thought, yeah, sure. Um, but I opened it and I looked at it and I thought, I don't know, and I just kind of clicked out of it and didn't even mention anything about it to Brian or nothing, my husband. The Burkina trip, that was my first experience with missions as well. Okay. I didn't know how all of that was to go, you know, like you said, lots of planning and everything, which was all very uh, meaningful and important, um, but uh, we get there and, and then it's, oh, it's not going to happen. So it left a mark on all of our hearts, you know, on how, how we go forward from 
that process. Um, but I believe completely in my heart that everything that we go through is another step for something bigger. I've always thought that way. Um, didn't know what it was. You never know exactly what's around the corner. You just don't. And you said something along the lines of uh, working in a coffee shop mm -hmm. and, and with young people, mm -hmm. um, going over the English language a little bit, but that and someone who bakes. Um, <laughs> I love to bake. You <laughs> have no secret there. Um, so I thought, th this is not ironing. It's just not. I don't, I don't think so. So. Um, and I mentioned that to Brian uh, about that, and he's like, wow, that's, that's kind of cool. Like, yeah. So um, it, it fits in with my desire to serve. Um, not that I have to go far, but still, uh, it, it goes right along with how my heart goes. And um, I work in a coffee shop, so there's, again, not irony. Maybe a touch, but not really. What's amazing though, you, you, you brought up the funds, you know, and the crazy right. thing is, is like we all had money, I mean, except I Diane, from the funds from a Burkina trip that were left mm -hmm. in this in account yeah. sitting there. Mm -hmm. And if if we would have had to fundraise, yeah, there it no wouldn't way. have been, we wouldn't have had time. This is true. Because it, it was, I went, oh my gosh, this is seriously like when it was finalized, like mm -hmm. six, eight weeks away from the time we decided our team and, and um, you know, this is it. Mm -hmm. So that it all like to start falling into place within, that's the only reason it fell into place in 48 hours is because you all were willing and then you already had the funds. And, like, mm -hmm. there's, and it was clearly it was put together because there's no way just like that. Right, okay, we mm -hmm. have a team. Mm -hmm. Gonna show up. Yeah. Show up, that's all he wants. That's all he wants, mm -hmm. so. Say yes. Yeah.